Hi, I'm Wayne Tuttle, and welcome to Chasing Legends. Welcome back to Chasing Legends, another fun-filled adventure for you this week. But before we get any further, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, go to the About section, legendsofthesuperstitionmountains.com, check everything out there, more bark notes uploaded, so there's always something new, and we'll be continuing to move and add to that archive. Um, that being done, let's just get straight to it, because they say in YouTube you're supposed to jump right into the stories. And so that we will. Now this is going to be probably sometime 84, 85, maybe 83. And it was a trip, and I don't remember the guy's first name, but I remember his last name was Rogers. A bit older. Um, I don't know how I knew these guys, but they were making a trip in, and this guy had believed he'd found some sort of cave or alcove or something where there was a bunch of gold bars and we're making a trip and this is when I'm pretty stupid still I'm pretty young but the guy was convincing and there there are a lot of those people out there and we went in and I had no idea where we were going we were supposed to pack in for a few days it was one of those trips where you're kind of meandering I remember we went in through second second water <clears throat> and we took second water and then we ended up down in Marsh Valley and we're kind of working our way around and we ended up on a part of what's Charlie Boy Black Mountain and once you get going you're kind of a little bit turned around and trying to figure where you were and I was trying to figure out why we went that route but Rogers was figuring things out as we went and there were probably seven or eight people and he would find things, and then I know there was one thing I remember was three boulders, and they were like in a triangular shape, and he made a big deal of that, and he made sure he measured them and all this, and then he'd sit down and he had a pad of paper or spiral notebook, and he would go through, draw it out, put the measurements in, and he'd do all this calculation, and then we'd move on. And I don't know cannot tell you whether it was stone maps or this he kept talking it was a spanish the spanish had done this i don't think he talked about the peraltas or the gonzalez's it was kind of like beyond me what we were doing <clears throat> and i wish i could remember who it was that got me hooked into this because maybe that would explain it more because i just knew we were going but the more he went he was so good that you became more convinced we were actually on to something so i was thinking oh this must be real because this guy is sitting down and writing stuff and out. And he'd even show us, okay, see if you do this and this equation and this. And that's what this means and uh, an azimuth and this and that. And it was like, okay, cool. So we worked our way around and we got up around Charlie Boy Mountain, which is Black Mountain. And I'd been out there before. But and I'd wandered some of that area, but it, it, I, I wasn't quite sure. And this is the area where Chuck Kenworthy's heart was and all that. So they started working up through there, and we spent a lot of time looking all over the place. And in hindsight, I understand more of what was going on than I do did then. At one point, we came to this little flat area, and I remember I talked to Jesse Feldman about it because. We talked and we found there was two similar areas, I think is what we came to, or else he knew of, heard of something in that area and I had been there. Anyways, it was something of a stone circle, laid out stone circle. And we came across that. And that was an important thing. And there were measurements taken in circumference and this and that. And I didn't understand any of it. So I was just kind of, you know, like, oh, okay. But... It was one of those things where, as each thing happened, each time he took measurements and he talked, he would explain, and I didn't understand the explanation. And I truly believe it's one of those situations where all of us were either, none of us understood probably, but you'd either were going to agree 
or keep your mouth shut because you didn't want to feel like you were too stupid to understand what he was talking about. So it was, it was, you're just like, oh yeah, yeah, I get it. So we must have spent three days and we were running out of food and stuff. And I, the only thing I remember on the first trip I did with these guys was I kept trying to figure out why we didn't go in through Bull Pass. Because I'm thinking that would have been so much easier than all this. But then I never said anything out loud. But I realized after a while it was because we were finding these waypoints, supposedly. Never heard the stone maps mentioned through any of this. So I don't know. And that probably would have taken me where I probably would have got up one night, packed my stuff, and just left. Because at that point I was... I was not a, in no shape or form at any time, but definitely at that time still, the stone maps had no draw on me. So we, we realized we hadn't found anything. Everyone's a little disappointed, but as we packed out through Bull Pass, this guy talked it, and we were all like, and he said, we're going to make another trip, and we'll plan out this trip, and we're going to go in. And everybody have to be a little lighter. I know it's going to be rough, but we're going to have to be a little lighter on food and stuff because we're going to have to. And he had figured out, however he figured out, was how many, how much gold there was. And he called it bricks, not bars. And I'd never seen, at that point, I'd never seen a real gold bar brought out of the mountains or anything similar to it. So I didn't know if it's like Fort Knox or what it's shaped like or anything. So I'm picturing just like some sort of bricks. And um, he said we would have to be, each of us would have to be required to carry 40 to 50 pounds of these bricks out. So we'd need plenty of room um, and make sure your pack's light and you got plenty of room. So I actually did this and I was like at home trying to figure out how I would carry this and how much would that weigh and how much room I needed. But we're going to have to, each person would be responsible for their own whatever they brought out. So I'm like, okay, I need this much, and when we come out, how far? And he said, make sure we bring rifles, because it was required that we would bring rifles, because part of the trip was going to be, is we would set up, and two or three people were going to be sentries down lower in the mountain to keep an eye out for people, because he was pretty concerned. He said the word was out, and that people would try to, you know, and I was kind of like, okay, this seems a little too overly serious because I've never been in this kind of situation where posts and sentries and all this. And the closure had happened. Things were, you know, there were still people out there. There was, there was still some shady and sketchy people out there, but it was kind of like, okay, really? All right. And I, I'm, I'm a kid still basically in all senses. So I'm thinking, yeah, okay. Not sure what I'm doing with my life, which is probably the best way to get someone into something like this. So we're planning this trip back in. They put me in this boulder, and it watches the the area land below. And I'm, I don't know what I'm looking for. Who knows? So I'm kind of keeping an eye out for whatever. And these other guys go up, and they're supposed to get. And the plan is they'll get theirs, and once they find this, they're going to load the gold up. And then I come down. So you're a little impatient, but at the same time, I'm thinking this is cool. Because I'm thinking at that time, I'm 21, 22 years old. And I'm pulling out 40, 50 pounds of gold today. So I'm planning on what I'm going to do with it. I don't even know how to get rid of gold at that time. Uh, But I'm planning on what I'm going to do with it. And so I was fully 100% suckered in on this. And I'm sitting there and the other guys that are there. And, you know, we couldn't really talk or anything. We're, you know, probably about 50 to 100 yards apart up on this side of the um, Black Mountain, Charlie Boy Mountain. I know it's confusing. Anyways, so eventually the other guys come down and we're just kind of like, okay, cool. Okay, so we get to go get ours. And I remember there was a guy, Jim. And I didn't know Jim before this, but he's an older guy. He's probably in his 40s, late 40s or something. A little bit of salt and pepper. Because people aged quicker back then. And he came down and he, he looked like he'd been sucking on a lemon. And he came down and then him and another guy were over by me. And I realized nobody was taking us back up and Rogers is there. And he's just kind of like talking to some people and all and you know it seems a little down 
and I remember, and, and for the children that watch this, this, but Jim's saying things like, um, just bullshit. And he'd look you in the eye and then he'd look at the ground for a while and go, this is bullshit. And we were kind of like, what? And he's like, there's nothing up here. So that guy's just yanking our chain. I don't know what he thinks he's getting out of it. He was really bitter. But he was being very low-key. So we got ready to walk out and coming out because we were tired. We were hungry because we weren't eating very much. So we just really spent that day there. We went down and then down in Marsh Valley we pitched a camp because everybody was too tired to hike out. And I remember that evening or whatever, Rogers took a couple guys. They went to go check something. And Jim just kind of the steam <laughs> had to release the steam. It's just like, I don't think that guy knows anything what he's talking about. He said, I've been thinking it over. And the only thing he ever finds is we literally are covering every square inch of the mountains. <laughs> and he runs into something because we're covering every square inch of the mountains. And I don't think his math is worth a shit. And I think we've been played. And I don't understand what the game is on it. But he said, I'm never coming back out here with that guy. And the thing is, I think if we would have been walking out and I kind of heard it and had time, but I had time to lay there and think about it that night and realize there was nothing that in any shape or form actually meant anything. I could have just wandered around the mountains and found the same stuff he did. And I guess he just was one of those we're almost there boys kind of guy. And so I just took it under advisement with myself and thought, I don't, I'm not going to be confrontational. I, I was definitely kind of not going to voice my opinion in that crowd because there were people that still fully believed Rogers. And I just decided, you know, I'm just going to quietly get out of here, get back to the parking lot and we're going to leave and I'm just not going to answer that phone again, whoever calls. And that's what we did. We hiked out and it was very quiet because you could tell there was a schism between the individuals. And we got back and as soon as we hit that parking lot, man, he was all drawing things up and showing us where we were and then started doing numbers again. And if I would have had a cell phone, it would have been great to take pictures. I'd see if even if his math was okay. Um, checked it with someone, but you know, he had a way of like dazzling you and I had no clue, no idea. I was disappointed, but at the same time, then you're also a little hurt and you're also a little angry like Jim because you realize you were putting your own money into this and this guy had an excuse for everything that happened. It was probably one of the most disappointing trips and it's a trip about nothing. A lot of these stories, people will say, well, that was entertaining and that. But they, you could talk to probably 10 other Dutch hunters would have two or three of the same story. Different people, maybe even a different area. But it's literally the same story. And I avoided a lot of that. And as I've shared, I've been on plenty of nowhere, goes nowhere digs. But that one was one I just kind of like always go, I, I, I don't remember anything particular funny. I remember the stone circle and that was because Jesse brought it up um, one year and we talked about it and I said, I know where there is one on, 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 on Charlie Boy on Black Mountain on the backside. And we talked about it and he asked and I said, we were just all over the place and we came across that. And I think I told Jesse about where it was that I could remember and told him I'd never been really back there, but I didn't know what it meant or what it was. This is long before the TV show, too. This is probably four or five years before the TV show. And I don't remember why we were talking about it exactly, but Jesse had brought up something, and I said, yeah, I know where there is one. And just recently, again, one of the things that's cool about this is it's a good memory exercise, but you start looking back and going to trips, and they all get mixed up. So I do need always a day or so to kind of go through and try to pinpoint. And this one, I can't remember who it was got me involved with this group. And I never saw any of them again, which happens with a lot of the groups, but um, which was probably good for me. Don't know what happened to them. 
And I always wonder someday if I'm going through the archives and see some photos or something out of a collection, if I'm going to run into something and say, oh, that's those guys. That's Rogers. But um, I have no idea what happened to them. Um, don't believe they ever found anything. I don't think there was anything remotely they were ever going to find. Uh, and, and, you know, it's funny how that clears up in a moment. And something that was a big lesson to me probably at the time is where a lot had happened in the mountains. And I was probably far more of a veteran in the mountains and more knowledgeable than I thought it was at the time. And that even occurred later, like in the 2000s, because I would always think and would think in terms, if anybody was even five years older than me, they knew a hell of a lot more than I did. Because I always thought, I guess it's the way we were raised. We always thought the people older than us um, were far more knowledgeable, and we didn't know crap. And after that, and certain things that happened as other stories are related, I started to learn more about how to get out of those situations and not buy into them. But that one, I was full hook and line and sinker and all of it. Um, man, I must have sat there behind that boulder for five or six hours, man, just watching down there. <laughs> And never questioning some of this stuff. I mean, it wasn't till that guy Jim started talking that I started to really question it. Yeah, we are kind of going in real random and we're zigzagging and why are we doing this? And it's never he has a point we're going to. We're just kind of wandering and then it's always like, yes, this is exactly where we were supposed to be. And it's like, well, we literally worked our way around it in the weirdest way possible. So... It was a learning lesson, which I didn't learn that well, because I still went out on some stupid hunts. But I have no idea what the whole thing was, if it was supposed to be this Jesuit stuff. All I remember is he talked about the Spanish, and it was kind of a hybrid of if you took the stone map Jesuit stuff with the Victorious Peak stuff, and then you took something of the little the Dutchman, and I never quite understood why there was this cache of gold bars. But the fact that we were going to be rich and be walking out with these gold bars was fascinating. And there are people to this day that still think they're on this stuff. And I learned there's a lot of Rogers out there. And they go in the mountains and they run people ragged. And they get people believing stuff. <clears throat> and those people that believe, there were several people that believe Rogers walked on water. And that this guy was 100% legit and real. But even I is pretty much basically still a kid. Um, once someone just kind of brought it up and I just kind of looked over and was like, huh. And then it just, the tumblers fall in place and you look around and go like, man, I'm an idiot. And, uh, but yeah, I don't know what happened to them. Um, I know that was Kenworthy's spot. I know a number of other people had a lot, a lot, thought there was something there. Never heard quite the same story as what he did. And I wish I had a better, better memory sometimes for this stuff. But that's what it is. But there you go. That's Chasing Legends this week. The Charlie Boy treasure story. Okay, Not to be confused with the Charlie Boy mountain story or this mountain or black mountain story, which there, a lot happened there. I made a lot of number of trips with a number of people. Um, but yeah, it was Marsh Valley and Charlie Boy. So there you go. Hope everyone enjoyed it this week. I like telling the personal ones because in a way, I'm kind of like not reliving them. And I'm not a very nostalgic guy, but it's rather than have to sit down and try to figure all this stuff out and write or rewrite it and stuff, I get to sit here and talk to all of you, but I get to talk to Trevor, who's always right in front of me. So he gets to hear these stories. So hopefully, one, he doesn't follow the wrong people into the mountains. And two, he gets to understand a little more of kind of the reasoning why I spent so much time in the mountains and the primarily the failures. The successes were the friends and the good times we had, definitely. But there you go. Charlie Boy Treasure. All right. Hope everybody's having a great week. Hope everything else goes smoothly for all of you. Like I said, check out www.legendsuperstitionmountain.com. Please subscribe to us. We'll catch you in the next time. But always remember, I'm Wayne Tuttle. You're not. And this was Chasing Legends.